So this lesson we're going to talk about money. So pause the video here and copy this down into your notes. There's going to be three functions of money. What does money do? And then six characteristics of good money. Um, or what makes some forms of money better than others. So go ahead and pause the video here, copy down this, and then we can move on. Now don't write this down, but think about what is money. You know, the little green stuff you carry around your pocket, the change that, you know, you, you lose and drop on the ground all the time. But think about it this way. Would it be a good idea for the United States to use ground beef as our form of money? You probably look at that question and say, Mr. Nell, come on. Let's get over this. Ground beef is a terrible form of money. But think about why it would be a terrible form of money, and you're pretty much previewing exactly what we're going to talk about. All the things that's wrong with ground beef, I mean, imagine trying to carry that around in your pocket. That's going to be really pretty difficult to do. It's going to be smelly. It's going to be dirty. Do you carry it around in a bag? It's just, it's more difficult to deal with. So that's why it makes bad money, and therefore that's why we don't use it as money. So the first function of money is what we call a medium of exchange. We use money as a basis for trade. It makes transactions easier. So for example, you know about how much a hamburger is in dollars. But if we didn't use money, and let's say you made pencils for a living, how much is that hamburger in pencils? Is it 20 pencils? Is it 150 pencils? Are these handcrafted, you know, fine pencils, or are they just kind of run-of-the-mill don't work, fall apart pencils. Well, what if the hamburger person doesn't want your pencils? Then you can't make a trade. So money makes trade easier, so it acts as a medium of exchange. Unit of account is the second function of money. Money allows us to compare different items using similar units. So again, how much does a hamburger cost? You know about how much money that is. And if we use kind of like an old idea, how many chickens equals one cow? You probably, being from Homewood or Flossmoor or one of the areas around here, you probably don't know, you know how much is a chicken worth, how much is a cow worth. But even if you did, it would still be difficult to have that, to try to figure out, you know, what units. What if I only have five chickens and it's, it's 20 chickens for a cow? What part of the cow does five chickens buy me? Does it buy me a leg? Does it buy me a hoof? Does it buy me the head? So it just, money makes things easier. And lastly, the last function of money, the store of value. Money allows us to earn it one day and spend it another, so it, it maintains its value over time. So money lasts a while. It's savable. It can be used later. You know, if you put it through the washing machine, no big deal. Uh, it's still going to come out the other side. You can still use it later on. Throw it on your pillow. Throw it on your mattress. You forget about it. Fifty years later, you come back. It may not buy the same amount of stuff, but it hasn't gone bad. Using ground beef, on the other hand, not so much. Uh, don't try this at home. Don't put ground beef under your pillow or under your mattress and wait 20 years to come back. It's not going to turn out well. Here's a list of the six characteristics of money. It has to be good money, at least. has to be durable, has to be divisible, has to be acceptable, has to be portable, has to maintain its value, and has to be familiar to both parties. So durable. Money should be durable and last for long periods of time. The dollar bill, you rip it. Okay, it, it's broken. But it's going to last a really long time, 100 years, 200 years, it's still going to be here. Uh, a cow, it might last a while. I don't know how, much, how long cows live, but I would imagine after 100 years, that cow is not going to be worth as much as it is right now. It has to be easily divisible. A dollar you can break into quarters and pennies and dimes. $50 is easy to break, so it can make change very easily. Again, you go into the McDonald's drive through and say, I want a hamburger, and they say, all right, that's worth one leg of a cow. Well, you're going to have a three-legged cow walking home. So money should be easily divisible. It has to be acceptable. Money should widely be acceptable, accepted as payment. So whatever you're using as money, you walk into a store, any store in the mall, you walk in with dollars, they're going to accept it. You walk in with your, you know, your pet cow and try to pay for, for anything, it's not going to work out. So it has to be acceptable. So again, good money versus bad money, that's kind of what we're dealing with. It has to be portable. The reason why we use flat dollar bills, flat little, for the basis of now, piece of paper, you know, even though it's made, money's made mostly of cotton, um, it's easily portable. You can carry around a lot of money in a relatively small package. And again, with the cow, not as easily as portable. It has to maintain its value. Money should hold its value for long periods of time. So again, dollar bill. 
yeah, 100 years ago it bought a lot more, and today it doesn't buy a whole lot, but it still maintains it, its value. Cows over time, they can get sick, they can, you know, they can die. It's not going to maintain its value for very long. Uh, it has to be familiar. So, for example, can you identify what makes a good cow versus a bad cow? How do you know if you're getting cheated and somebody's giving you, like, the worst cow in the bunch? I have no idea either. So money has to be easy to identify. You look at a dollar bill, you can pretty much tell if it's a counterfeit bill, if it feels like paper, if it feels like an actual dollar bill. So it has to be familiar to both parties, and both parties have to know exactly its value. So take a minute, maybe close your notes, take a look at the screen, and you can hit pause. Try to come up, try to remember what are the three functions of money and the six characteristics. And then obviously you can look back in your notes for the answers, but see what you can recall.